It is not. You look okay. good. Yeah, you look good. Guys, does, does Rant look, is it too bright in his room? I, it's noon here in LA. Uh, it is a little bit overcast, so there's a lot of light coming in. Uh, we see everyone, not everyone is from LA. So yay, Alyssa is here from LA and so is Jeff and so is Eric. We got a lot of LA people. Bernardo is here from Philly. <laughs> Uh, Neil, yay! Neil, are you a unicorn today? I'm not sure. Beverly is also here from LA. So, hi, everybody. Hi, and Mary Catherine is from Boston. Excellent. Neil, you are a unicorn, yes. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm just kind of hanging out here with Rat, who is also uh, calling in from Glendale, right? Is that correct? Suburbia, yes. Suburbia, yes. <laughs> But uh, if you don't know Hrant, he's sort of a regular in typographic circles. Um, if you are on Twitter, then you probably know Hrant. Yeah, for better or worse. For better or for worse. Some Actually, I got, I got to know Hrant through Twitter. And no, it was not It was not for better when we first met. It was for worse. <laughs> so better to start that way. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, you're much sweeter in, in person. And then Jason is here from Cupertino. Hello, guys. So welcome, welcome. Please use the share button underneath our video. We are just getting started a little bit late. I had some internet issues, got them fixed, thank God, in time. It's just um, Armenian time, don't worry. That's <laughs> right, and Filipino time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let everyone know, uh, share it out. Let everyone know that we're just about to get started. Um, this talk that Hrant's going to give today is something that we, yes, Bernardo, same as Hispanic time. This talk is something that Hrant gave at our Topography 20 by 20. We did a Pecha Kucha in 2015, and Hrant did this wonderful presentation. I asked him to talk about the subject today, and I hope he'll present it. Uh, I think he has some extra goodies for you in terms of information as well. But it's very delightful. I enjoyed it, Haran. I'm not sure about you. Thank you. It's I was. Uh, it's very fast paced, and I tend to be a bit ponderous. But I enjoyed it, and it helped me focus. And uh, I think it was very fun. Uh, oh, good. It's a fun topic. Um, and but it's it's easy to miss the serious aspect. And uh, I have three times the time now, so hopefully I can go a little bit deeper. But um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about, as Oprah, I believe, says. So <laughs> I'm not Oprah, but can I ask you what's yeah. on your shirt? This is a shirt printed for uh, the Granashan conference. Oh, yes. Is it mirror imaged? Oh, it is to you, but okay. we see it correctly. Oh, okay. um, and it's different letters from different alphabets, writing systems. This is Armenian, and this, they made a very good choice because this is a very characteristic, distinctive, very frequent letter. Mm -hmm. And um, the other ones, uh, this is Arabic, Farsi, Arabic, Georgian, I don't know all of them, Cyrillic, Hebrew, Greek, I assume. Uh, and, um, and this is kind of, to me, this is LA. And one of my slides alludes to that. Um, and I like it, even though I, I'm part of a threatened minority culturally. Mm -hmm. um, I like being amongst other minorities. It's even though it's more work. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that on a particular slide. Okay. Uh, and just thank you, Rachel, for making this happen. Of course. I appreciate so... it. It's a topic that's fun and useful. I think it's very useful. If you guys have any questions while Hrant is talking, please use the questions and answers tab. It's just right below our video. And I see uh, Mary, Mary Catherine has already put in a question. If you share any uh, sentiments for the same questions, please vote it up and we will answer them in order. Uh, so just want to welcome everyone to Typography Dojo. I am your host, Rachel Elner. I've been doing these interviews every two weeks, and Hrant is one who's been participating in them, so I'm really happy to have him on today. Uh, Hrant, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yes, Hrant Papazian, uh, Armenian, uh, like most Armenians who did not grow up in Armenia because of the Armenian genocide, mostly because of that. Uh, I'm from Lebanon, and um, 
I'm probably more American now than anything else because I've been living here since 1986, but I've lived four different countries, traveled a lot, 30 countries, um, and I like to observe. And I grew up in a country with three different alphabets. Uh, and I believe early exposure to that is probably what made me into this. Um, not necessarily anything inherent be good about that, but I've, I've come to believe that there is. Um, and um, now I design typefaces uh, and uh, I focus on uh, non-Latin, not Latin. And that's a very tricky term because, and, and it's not a very good term, but it's what we've ended up stuck with. And there are some positives to it, to its trickiness in that um, Latin is very dominant and most non-Latin scripts share a struggle that even though on the surface they look different, they're both, many of, most of them are doing, trying to do the same kinds of things. So being, uh, focusing on one non-Latin script does give you insight on other ones. Um, if you say, oh, I'm, an, I'm a specialist in non-Latin scripts, that doesn't sound right on the mm -hmm. surface, but there is something about it that you, uh, an insight that you glean from studying one or being immersed in one rather, that you get from the other ones. Uh, it's a common struggle and it's not like Latin is the enemy, it's just that Latin is uh, very powerful in presence. So, and that can make you uh, complacent, it can make you um, feel like you have to protect yourself uh, culturally, but the important thing is to adapt, not to preserve. I'm not a fan of people who uh, treat uh, non-Latin scripts as museum pieces that have to stay the way they've been because then the younger generation will not want to use it because they will think it's old and it will be old. So um, it's very important to, to me that no matter how small a script is to remain dynamic and uh, because you can't help the fact that they cross cross pollinate. pollinate. And um, this talk is basically about what can go right, what can go wrong, and how getting a handle on it versus just either laughing at it or mocking it. Um, so trying to uh, leverage it, shall we say. But some of the slides are kind of funny, so it's okay well, if you do yeah. laugh. <laughs> it's okay. I if laugh you... at the most. <laughs> Mostly I laugh at uh, the innocence of it. Of course, yes, yes. But uh, sometimes it's just bad, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> yes, so. yes, exactly. Okay, so did you want to uh, share your screen? Yes, let's do that. Excellent. Alessandro, where are you from? And Vittoria is here from Portugal. Excellent, cool. All right, Harat, so whenever you'd like to get started. So you do see the title screen? Yes, we do, thank you. Okay. Foreign Flink Fonts. It's not a very graceful title, but uh, alliteration... Uh, is a, it's a hard to resist. So foreign fling fonts. The back of the, the background image is um, the Armenian eternity sign. This is on a church in downtown Beirut, Lebanon. And this is the one with the most arms that I've seen. It has 32 arms. And you can see, I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, but right above the lowercase i, the i above the word foreign, there's a, some plaster work and that's from uh, bullets. Uh, because oh. Lebanese civil war is all over and they repaired it. Um, and it's nicely symbolic that eternity that's had bullets fired at it, but it's still there. Um, now, other side of the world, LA. Uh, I love LA, but this is one of the reasons. Uh, this is uh, on the left side is um, a monument in uh, Grand Park in downtown. And there are 25 languages on it. Um, and uh, it's a celebration of multiculturalism. And this is very formal, but uh, the one on the right is, just, is the same thing done in, uh, inadvertently, informally. This is at the border of Thai Town and Little Armenia in East Hollywood. And uh, you can see they're mingling. And that border is what's interesting, the hybridness. So uh, Armenians and Thai people who in their own countries never see each other, in LA uh, have to coexist and hopefully to some extent like each other. 
uh, and the uh, alphabets, the writing systems, do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting when it comes to visual language of those, uh, not just colors and shapes, motifs, but the letter shapes, the letter forms. Um, this is in uh, Glendale. This is uh, something that's at the crosswalks to make you not get hit by a car. And uh, it's Spanish, English, and Armenian. And uh, you could say that the, the Latin in the middle is getting a special treatment with the little eye, eyeballs. But uh, this is America, and uh, that there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest. But as long as the other ones are there, that's very encouraging. That, um, that's being taken care of. Okay, here's a bad one. Well, it's, I shouldn't say that. This is uh, clearly an attempt for somebody to sell their product by appearing spiritual. And uh, this is a vaguely Indian rendering uh, of Latin, Om. And uh, va that vaguely is very important. A lot of people who engage in this sort of activity, letter form wise, are, want to be vague because they don't want to, they want to give an aura of something. They, it's, not, it's not supposed to be too literal. Although for uh, somebody who's occupied with uh, writing systems, this is quite literally Devanagari inspired. Um, so some people do it to get an advantage in terms of psychologically. Uh, this is in um, Heathrow in London. And um, I find this very nice. Purists do not. But mm -hmm. this is a sushi place. It looks like Japanese. And sushi is Japanese. There's nothing wrong to me with doing this. And it's rather, it's not too hard to read. Unfortunately, I believe, when was it? Oh, I think late last year, they replaced this with a more modernist kind of generic uh, yo exclamation mark. It's, it's vaguely Japanese now. Uh, I think this was better. So uh, when people uh, play around like this, I think there's nothing wrong with it. It depends on your intent. Um, Grant, why did they why did they change it? Do you think there were complaints? Well, that's a good question. As an expert in branding might be able to give more insight, but my suspicion is that once in a while, because change is is considered important, and especially in the West. So once in a while, a company will say we need to change things, and then they'll change too much. It's mm -hmm. overreact. And um, I don't think they got complaints. It's possible somebody who worked there um, said, oh, this is uh, your, your uh, what do you call it? You're uh, stereotyping Japanese people. Well, this is what their writing looks like. That I don't think that's, that's negative okay. stereotyping. Okay. So um, I think that they changed it as an overreaction to either staying the same or worrying about negative reactions, but it's hard. It's just speculation. I'm not sure. Um, this is very interesting. This is in uh, downtown Beirut. And um, I can't see what people are writing, but I want people to guess. Actually, mm, I don't know if we can, we probably can't do a poll right now, but uh, I want people to take just a moment to guess what writing system this is inspired from. Now, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm speculating myself, but there, there seems to be a very clear uh, something being evoked here. Uh, and considering that this is in Lebanon, that's a clue. The bottom looks, uh, you know, like a faux Greek, but this top part with the extenders all over the place, it looks very much like uh, Phoenician. Phoenician has been dormant, I don't like to say dead, I, has been dormant for almost 2,000 years. And this sign is probably from the 1960s or 50s. And people are using the Phoenician alphabet to evoke something, <laughs> to evoke um, either a legitimacy or uh, it's a clothing store, but maybe it's a traditional clothing store. I don't know. It's, it's actually closed now. It's been closed for a while. But this is a very interesting sign for me. Fred, um, there's some guesses in the, in the chat bar. There's four for Greek. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one for Phoenician, and Jeff says electrical tape. They did seem they did use tape. <laughs> electrical <laughs> tape is not a writing system yet, but maybe. <laughs> but uh, this is very Greek. This, because of its extenders, 
if you look up the Phoenician alphabet later, you'll see that a lot of letters do this. And again, this is Lebanon where Phoenicia was. So it's, uh, I think that's what it is. I don't know. Uh, this is the opposite end. This is, um, it doesn't even have to be an alphabet. This is done by some high school kids. They have a music club and they used uh, music notation to write, to make letter forms. And uh, the thing is, especially for young people, but really anybody, any age likes to play around and likes to evoke things that maybe are not obvious that they've noticed that they want to do. So um, this is just a reflection that uh, there is no purity. People like to play around and it's just a matter of having the good intention and being mindful and, and uh, trying to see what consequences this at doing this would would have um this is quite significant i want to spend a few minutes on this um if you look at the bottom left that's trajan and that's considered the uh, ne plus ultra the ultimate monumental latin style i put forth however that the style above that is more monumental if you're carving something into marble the one on top looks more, what do you call it? More uh, authoritative, more solemn. And uh, coincidentally, this is, the top is how Armenian is stressed. The thicks and thins of the letter forms come directly from Armenian. I know this because this is a plaque at an Armenian school, hmm. at an Armenian private school. So uh, this, the arch on the left, the U shape, actually it is a U. The arch shape is uh, not like the one on the left in, La in Trajan, it's still like on the one on the right in Armenia. Uh, and the M has mostly equal uh, stems and the V is, is uh, thin. It's not like that in the Latin one. N, same thing. So in uh, Latin, um, the brush or the, the pen stroke can determine the distribution of thicknesses uh, Armenian didn't do that. Um, it might, it did do it later when the lowercase was invented around the 10th, 11th century, but the, the uh, capital, the original Armenian letter forms were just like this Latin has been rendered as. And this is very interesting. It's subtle. Non-font people will not notice this. People who don't know what Armenian looks like won't notice this. They'll think it's just badly done or, but there's clearly something here intentionally or not, the person who made this evoked the Armenian script in Latin. Uh, most of the time, it goes the other way. Most of the time, Latin influences lesser scripts. But um, the other way happens more than people realize. And it's a very interesting territory. And most of all, there's no stopping this. It's a matter of managing it, trying to help people with it. Um, so. And the next slide is uh, from an Armenian church. And if you look at the numerals, <coughs> excuse me, 1978, you look that you realize they don't look entirely Latin. And the reason again is, for example, if you look at the nine, and if you look at the second Armenian letter on the bottom right, that's a very that form is a very uh, standard Armenian capital shape. In fact, uh, the letter eight here is very close to an actual Armenian letter. In Latin, you almost never see the top of the eight so small. Oh, and if you look at the Latin letters above the numerals, th that's not there, the high waist, that's not a part of what this engraver was trying to achieve. The, engra the engraver, intentionally or not, made the numerals look Armenian. Um, and whether this is conscious or not, sometimes there are cases where it's clearly not conscious. This is very funny. Look at the, in the red text, look at the lowercase a's. Now, in Armenian, the U shape, the N lowercase U, lowercase N shape is very prominent. It's very, I don't know, 80% of the letter forms have that shape. So this person who's Armenian, I happen to know who it is, was while they were writing, please stay away. Every time they were going to write a lowercase a, they made a U first, which is very funny. Yeah, I see so that. They made a, 
they made a U and then they closed it. There's only one explanation. It's that it's coming from her Armenian handwriting. Now the W in away is that's not a W, that's an Armenian IPE. It's the first letter of the Armenian alphabet. It has those two arches. So, and a lot of Armenians who write a lot do that. If you look at the black and white text on the back, you will see that the IPE, the W, this W shape, it, you will see it a lot. And uh, if you look to the left, the English version of the same person's handwriting, you will see, you probably will see W's or white there. Something white helped. So the W in white at the top left is an Armenian IPE. And this is because the person unintentionally evoked that shape because they're used to it. It is a muscle memory or, or something deeper, whichever. Can you bring um, your mouse over to what you're specifying? Over oh, I, didn't, the, I wasn't sure you could see the oh, point. We can see it, we can see it. So this is it. the W, but it looks like an Armenian letter. And this is a very big deal Armenian letter. This is 20% of Armenian text is this letter. So here, same thing. Uh, here, it's really drastic. So they made a U and then they put a, they realized it's not an A and they put a top every time. It's not like they did it once and realized this doesn't look great and wrote, they, I'm sure they know how to write the lowercase a, but they, writing quickly, the Armenian came out. And this is very interesting. And this is uh, worthy of a, a PhD dissertation at some point, but uh, <laughs> probably not by me. Okay, this is uh, in, on Las Feliz Boulevard, and this is a Thai restaurant. And this is very nice, it's subtle. Uh, in Thai, there uh, there's a, something called the looped form where a lot of the letter terminals have little loops on them. And it's, it's tempting to compare that to Latin serifs, although that only goes so far. But um, the nice thing is that without screaming the word Thai or without using the Thai flag or without using Thai letter forms, Anybody who's been exposed to Thai might get a feeling from this sign that this is a Thai place. And that's very nice. This level of subtlety, it doesn't have to be explicit. It's, um, it's a nice touch. And there's nothing, there's not, not only there's nothing wrong with this, this is really wonderful to me to see something like this. Um, this is more like in your face. This is Thai. The next four slides, by the way, were. Uh, uh, loaned to me by Ben Mitchell, a friend who uh, is an expert in Southeast Asian scripts. Um, and so the top is Thai, and you see the loops being, in Latin there's a term floriated, which means made to look like leaves, and this is totally floriated. And, uh, and the Latin is inheriting that. Now you might say the Latin would have done that anyway, but I don't think so. I think the floriation, the, the leaf-shaped terminals in the Thai are inspiring the leafiness of the Latin. Um, and the numerals are a little bit unusual too. If you look at the numerals down here, um, this is not the, the way somebody who uses Latin thinks of the numeral one, usually, almost ever. Um, so that's very interesting. Next one. Oh, this is, uh, this reminds me of this, these, the next three slides remind me of the uh, uh, the old spaghetti western the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> so this is the good this is the bad and this is a hatchet chop i mean this is a tie again but uh it's there is no sensitivity here they just took parts of latin letters and uh, cut and paste moved them around came sufficiently close to a tie letter and using context you can probably read this um, but what is it saying? Now, it depends. Now, this is a movie poster. It depends what movie it's for. To be fair, I mean, if it's a movie about, I don't know, aliens, if it's a movie about colonialism, if it's a movie about something where a hatchet job evokes something correct, that's fine. But that's rarely the case. Usually they do it because it's fun to do mechanically. Uh, they do it because uh, a lot of non-Westerners want to be Western. And they have, a, to be honest, an inferiority complex. And um, the writing system is one way to do that. They, they speak, they try to speak English, they write in Latin. Um, 
it's an aspiration, but it can also be, it can also short change your native culture. Uh, and to me, this is such a case. Uh, the next one is the, the bad, with the bad and the, the ugly, sorry. And this is Thai too. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's basically a, a minimal effort uh, from a Thai, from a Latin font. And um, so this text up here is okay, even though this isn't pretty much a lowercase a with the bottom removed, but this is really blatant. And this is probably a category of worst offender in terms of uh, inappropriateness. Um, it does, again, depend on context, but this, it's really rare that something like this makes sense beyond the graphic designer's desire to mess around. And um, in a lot of professions, but in graphic design, people do things uh, that seem confined to their screen. They copy paste, they enjoy it, and they don't, they're not in a position to uh, think about the consequences. Now, what are the consequences? Is this harmless? Is this harmful? Who does it harm potentially? Uh, I think that in general, uh, you have to think about two categories of people, young people, and diasporans, which is people who live outside of the country who want to preserve their culture. Most countries have a diaspora. Armenians have a very large diaspora. Thai people do. Uh, Vietnamese, a lot of people have a large diasporas and notably in Los Angeles. That's why it's, it gives me extra awareness to be in LA that I see all of these non-Armenian families who, like me, are trying to keep their culture going. Sometimes they go, they become too conservative or they give up, but it's important to stay flexible. However, it's also important to realize when harm is being done. And I think this is such a case. Um, it's not confined to contemporary stuff. This is a Burmese, Burmese font that based on black letter on the top. This is more conventional, I guess, but um, this is the black letter. I have no idea how easy it is to read. I can guess that this is easy to read, but this one, uh, it might be or might not be. Legibility isn't always critical, but um, if you're doing this just to get a kick out of it, that's not design, that's art. So that's selfish. So you need to um, serve the user. And are you serving? Who are you? What are you doing to whom? by doing this it depends so it, it's contextual um this is a picture i took in um, formerly the largest hotel in europe now demolished is the rossiya hotel in moscow and um this is actually cyrillic it's the russian language rendered uh, in some ways close to arabic mm -hmm. and this is i asked what this was and because i was confused why would they do this it's actually a, a Middle Eastern restaurant bar, you know, belly dancers, hookah, that sort of thing. So, so this is, uh, it, it looks really garish and it somewhat is, but it also makes sense. I mean, you're without even reading the text, if you've seen Arabic before, or if you've been to an Arab country and you, you miss it and you, you know, you're in Moscow and you want to get some of that flavor, this font does the job. Uh, but it's i'm not sure technically because i don't read i know the letter sounds but i don't read russian i don't know what else it's doing and i because i'm not a native so that I, that's lacking so I'm, it could be worse than i think but um this is i don't think it's as worse as some people would think um this is in yerevan armenia and this is a kind of a mess this is uh if you look at this letter it says mr barbecue transliterated mr parpecue and um this is a uh, much derided chinese uh, chop suey style of latin letters but this is armenian and it's a barbecue place so i have no idea why they're using a faux chinese font in armenian for a barbecue place but you know these things happen and you have to be uh, ready to handle it uh, this is very interesting. This is an example sent to me by uh, Aaron McLaughlin. And this is actually the Tamil script of India rendered as three other writing systems. That the first and the third lines are Latin. 
Latin derived, or Latin inspired. This is Devanagari inspired, another Indian script, and this is Arabic. I couldn't really tell this one, but this is clearly Arabic. You can tell sometimes from very obvious things like the, the diamond shaped dots. Not a lot of writing systems use, use that. Arabic is prominent, maybe some smaller ones do. But this is clearly Latin, it's vertical stress, it's all uh, separate. Mm. And this is Devanagari. And this is, uh, this is a traditional Arabic style where Arabic letters are used to make figures. And I'm actually not sure what this is about. Could be another uh, uh, hookah joint, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, this is a grand old example that I, I took this picture probably 16 years ago. Uh, no, more. No, 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 yeah, 16 years ago. Um, and the bottom is not a very good Arabic font, but it shows you what it's kind of supposed to look like at, at, in the lowest, at the lowest level. So this says yom wara yom, day after day. And um, this is, this, believe it or not, says the same thing. Oh. Can you guess what font this is? Serpentine, serpentine. So this is, look at the P, this is the serpentine. They used a lot for like uh, sports, like, you know, jock stuff, you know, this is a sports font. So uh, this is Yom Marayom. If you compare it, you can tell it's vaguely legible. It's probably legible if you read a lot of Arabic, but it's also very strange. This is the name of the singer, Samira Saeed. I can read it even though... Uh, and I grew up with Arabic on the side. I was never very fluent. But um, you can figure it out. But is that enough? I mean, if this is, uh, for example, music that young people would listen to, um, what are they feeling when they see this? Uh, they could be feeling that the traditional Arabic forms are not good enough. Uh, so in some way, to me, it's saying that uh, the English, the Latin forms, are doing a job that the Arabic forms cannot, should not be doing. So, and what does that convey upon young people especially? So you have to worry about that. You can't just say, oh, you know, I don't feel like buying Arabic letters. Let me look at my font directory and find the Latin font and, and put it together. And in, ca in the case of this letter here, the meme, uh, you know, the P is close enough. Nothing has been done to it. It's just, I mean, just used as this letter. No modification has been done. Um, so part of it is playfulness, part of it is laziness. Uh, in general, there's uh, cases like this, there's just not a lot of contemplation of what can happen, what's happening beyond my screen, beyond this poster. Um, this is a good example. This is a, I'm not sure how healthy this juice is, but we used to have it when I was a kid in Lebanon. And uh, it's an interesting packaging, it's tetrahedral. And uh, we used to have fun uh, after finishing the juice, blowing it up and, <laughs> and stomping on it. It would explode. And, and, uh, and during the war, that was as kids, it was fun to pretend that we had uh, that kind of power. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, the interesting thing here is this Arabic bon jus. Bon jus. It's a French word. Uh, it means good juice. And... Um, these letters are clearly copy pasted. This is a lowercase n or u flipped sideways. This is a numeral nine. And um, again, this is a juice that kids drink mostly. And uh, what is it saying to them? Maybe something positive, maybe something negative, but few people actually think about that. And that it's our responsibility as designers to think about what we're doing to our users to not just the, the design, not just the graphic designers who install and uh, use our fonts, but the people who see them. Can I ask you a question yes. about this juice one? Yes. I mean, isn't that the job of people who are doing localization to, to make the marks look very similar to the original? Well, that's, that's a very good wording. point. And the, the, there's a formal level, there's a formal shape level that has to be respected. Um, by the way, this is a Lebanese product. So um, it's, it's not, I'm not sure this is a good case of localization because this, this, I'm not sure which came from, they probably made both logos at the same time because they were, this is a Lebanese product. Um, 
So um, the question is, is the Arabic logo doing the job of being harmonious with the Latin? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if you saw the Latin logo at one point and then you saw only the Arabic one without reading it, would you think that they come from the same product? I, mean, I don't think so. Um, but that level, it's a harmony. You can't completely ignore. This goes back to um, the issue of scripts cannot stay completely traditional. They have to evolve. Uh, so if you make your, if you make the Bonjus Arabic logo very traditional Arabic calligraphy, first of all, A, that doesn't look like the Latin one. You're right, it doesn't uh, harmonize. Also, it makes it look old. Mm. And uh, you won't sell the product and you won't be doing, you'll just basically shortchanging your chances. It's the last opportunity to contribute to the visual language, especially of young people. Um, by the way, one very nice thing here is this, uh, the J's tittle, the dot. This is very nice. This is an Arabic dot. So um, this is great to see. So this is the, this Latin font actually has a touch of Arabic in it, which is nice. And But this one, to me, goes way too far. And mm. it, it's not elegant. This has an elegance. If you don't want it to be elegant, if you want it to be you know, dorky, kitty looking, then the Latin should have done that too. It's not doing that. Um, now, an example of uh, some, just a shameless plug here, the logo that I did a few years ago. Unfortunately, they stopped using it. Now they're using a really uh, constructed saw, you know, typical uh, Swiss generic style of logo. But uh, when they asked me to do this, um, this is what I came up with. And for some people, this goes too far uh, for purists. This, this bottom one is an Armenian word, Luis, it means light. And this is the in Armenian version, and this is the Latin version. This is the English version of their logo. And this is very Armenian looking. This is a traditional Lyon structure. This is the Armenian shape. This is actually, this it looks like very much like a La, an Armenian uh, uppercase letter. So the construction is not a typical Latin construction. So, um, and what's interesting about this organization, the reason this to me makes sense is that this organization actually gives scholarships to Armenian students from Armenia to go study abroad and then return to Armenia and share their knowledge. So there is a subtext here, it's more than a subtext, there is a really strong message here that you have to stay Armenian because you're coming back to help Armenia. So this logo tries to do that. This logo reminds people who are looking at it that there is a reason you left Armenia. And the reason is to go back and help people learn what you learn. So uh, that's what I tried to do. And they were very happy with it. But at some point, probably the same thing as the, the oh sushi situation where, you know, uh, we need new something new, new blood. We need to change things. Let's change the logo, even though it was working fine. Anyway, so, um, and this is some information. This is my Twitter handle. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that people follow me. It might, uh, but it's very easy to unfollow me. So I, <laughs> I won't hold it against you. This is a good uh, link. Um, it goes to a Flickr group, Crossforms. It's a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And it, there's a very large collection. This group was actually started by Ben Mitchell and I've added a lot of stuff. Different people have added. Whenever I run into a good example, I ask people to send it to, to send it there. And it's really worth looking at. It's very inspiring, good cases, bad cases. It makes you think. And uh, throughout my, you know, quote unquote career, I, that's kind of been my purpose is to make people think. And that helps me think too. Um, that's it. And this cookie, I don't know if you see the cookie in the background. We do. That's an Armenian eternity sign too. Just okay. like... Or is it? The one at the beginning. Yes. So this is our Armenian design. Mm. This is our I mean, sorry for the busy thing taste. And uh, the first one was in stone. And this is a cookie. This is like the most uh, temporary thing <laughs> that can exist. So <laughs> it's going to go away. So uh, uh, I want to say that cultures evolve. Even the Armenian sign for eternity might need to evolve. So uh, there's nothing bad about that. That's life. And you have to work with it. You 
Uh, you can't be defensive and you can't be cavalier about it either. So uh, that's my message. Thank and you, you can eat it too now that it's a cookie. Oh, I ate it shortly after I took the picture. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Excellent. A cookie monster. Let me stop sharing. Okay, I'll close that. So um, G Mark Jammer made a couple funny comments though. Uh, okay. During the, the Thai movie poster, he said at least it's in 3D because it didn't oh. have all that time and it was in 3D. And then the juice box, he said the vitamin added is in Comic Sans and that made me. Oh, it was? I, I should have noticed it. It's a shame <laughs> on me. Well, it, is, it is comical that they have to add vitamin C to an orange drink, but. Right. <laughs> it is pretty I, I don't, it's Lebanese, so you never know how. Uh, how good it is on in ingredient wise. So right, right. Although the so I mean, can... Lebanese food itself is great, but uh, Lebanese food that uh, tries to be Western, I don't know. It's a, mm. Suspicious. Anyway. <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, please put them underneath. Mark Jammer just said uh, Lebanese food is life. So please add them underneath. We do have one question, but I have a couple questions for you offhand. So we I, I touched. Upon the point of localization so I you know I do get a lot of questions from teams that do localization um, someone who used to work here does localization for Miramax where their movie properties have to be translated into other languages in order to be marketed in other countries um, Disney also does the same with all their animation titles so what do you uh, what do you how do you figure out what's good localization and what's not what is like crossing the line like how how do you measure success in that way i well in, uh, instead of looking at the formalistic aspects i would start from the beginning intention um mm -hmm. you have to care you have to want to serve those non-latin users um not necessarily serve not only or not only directly serve who's paying you but the culture that's going to be looking at this thing so you will have to care now you can't teach people to care very easily i mean either they care or they don't so um but if you're working with people you can identify if they care or not and decide to work with them or how to work with them um the other thing is uh and i get some flack for saying this but there, i believe in something called nativity it's not a christian thing but nativity is um a native appreciation for visual language. Um, I grew up with three systems and uh, I can see things in them that I cannot see in other systems. And I can see things in them that other people who didn't have early exposure to those systems, I don't think they can see. I don't know how they would. Um, and I believe, and I'm a scientific type, bio, puberty is a big deal. I believe that until puberty, your brain is learning, and then it rather quickly switches, transitions to doing. And when you transition to doing, it's game over for nativity. You, it's, I think it's nearly impossible to gain nativity in something after a certain age. It's not the same age for everybody, but it's pretty early. It's earlier than a professional career starts. So, um, I mean, if you want, uh, if you're, uh, for some strange reason, if you want your kids to be a non-Latin design type designers, get them looking at <laughs> other scripts a lot before they're like 10. But I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but, but uh, <laughs> there are more lucrative careers out there. But um, I was exposed, most people are exposed in spite of themselves. It's not like their parents planned it. So, um, the, what this comes down to is you need to recruit help from somebody who is a native. So if you're localizing an Arabic font, uh, you need to get a reading, at least a reading, hopefully direct contribution from somebody who grew up with that writing system. Um, this costs more. It's trouble. It's also an ego thing. Some people, some designers maybe don't want to think that they need any help. Um, but we all need help, and we, it's, this is not something that you can magically acquire. So, um, and that's where uh, that that's where the line is crossed or not. It's not a clear line. But want caring and getting help from the right people. That if you do that, 
then you're probably going to end up with something decent and maybe great. Um, and uh, this is the thing is getting a native getting a native to help you isn't guaranteed to work. Uh, most of the worst Arabic logos out there are made by Arabs. And uh, if you look, uh, if you want to see a, like uh, uh, some Arabic logo carnage, you go to the United Arab Emirates, and uh, they 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 just take, for example, what's the thing like uh, Vogue? I don't know anything. They take a high-end mark, and uh, mm -hmm. now here's the thing: people who are buying that product in the United Arab Emirates would rather be in Paris. So when they're buying that product they they want to be western to some extent they want to acquire that cachet so um it might make sense for the logo to do that but you also have to think about is it nice to treat people like that is it nice to just give them what they want versus what they need i don't think designers only can give people what they want uh either uh, subliminally or very uh, overtly designers have to contribute to to sociopolitics uh, these days being political is is the, the in thing uh, it's never been an out thing for me and um politics is important i mean um you have to be involved especially if your kids are depending on it other kids are depending on it. um it's very political i found this the other day hmm. So it's not backwards to you? No. Okay, this is an Armenian letter. It's the letter to, t sound. And uh, this letter triggered uh, our kids to go to Armenian private school. Now, my wife has been in the public school system for before she met me. And I grew up in an, uh, in an Armenian private school environment. And uh, after many years, she convinced me to that we should put our kids in public school. And um, I eventually agreed. There's a cost issue. There's an issue of, are we, we thought we were, we are good enough parents to keep them Armenian without having to put them in an Armenian school. Uh, and our eldest, uh, who's he's 17 now, uh, he was finishing an Armenian preschool, but it came to a point where we had to put him in a, <clears throat> a public school or Armenian school. and. One day she picked him up from school, from preschool, and on the way, spontaneously, he said, this is my fa favorite letter. Okay. And she comes home and she goes, we have to put our kids in Armenian private school. Oh. <laughs> and I still get moved by that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, it was probably the, she was probably feeling guilty. It was probably the last, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, but, um, it's and it's political. I mean, you put your kids in an Armenian school. It means something. It means that right. you want to survive politically, culturally. Right, right, right. So, good I'm question. Just step, I'm going to just step back in terms of the localization. Like, so you can't define success in terms of the transitioning or the intermixing of cultures. But at least we know it's atrocious if you can't read it, right? Yeah. I mean, and, if, well, legibility is. So legibility and readability, you know, not a lot of people, not everybody believes this, but there's a difference. And um, legibility is very easy to ensure. Readability is very hard to, to gauge. If you stick to convention, it's probably readable. But um, just because it's legible doesn't mean it's good enough. Right. Um, and um, so there's the issue of balancing formal shapes. There's the issue of existing the authenticity, which is hard to hard to gauge, authenticity of the script, um, and it's a balance, and the balance depends on the context very much. I mean, you could do, and I've made uh, uh, logos that not I made letter forms that uh, look too Latin in some contexts, but just fine in the, in the other context. I've I remember making um, a Cyrillic font that needed a Latin component and the, the Latin lowercase g looked strongly looked like a flipped Cyrillic letter. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very legible and uh, Cyrillic people, most Cyrillic people love that. They love seeing their, everybody loves seeing their script affect another one. 
uh, many Latin people who don't like it. Because they say, oh, this is, this is a pastiche of the real thing. This is not Latin. This is neither Latin nor Cyrillic. Yes, it's neither. It's a hybrid. So right. uh, hybridness is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to answer some questions. Speaking of hybridness, we uh, have three questions. <laughs> you'll have to read them. My screen apparently isn't big enough to. Uh, I will. No, no, I will read them to you. Okay. Okay. So Mary Catherine asks a question. <coughs> Do you have a favorite letter form hybrid of all time? Is there a, well, uh, even within Latin, I don't know if, uh, probably not most of you saw that um, Type Thursday event where uh, I showed tragic, not Roman. It's a No, because a lot of people here are not from, are, are okay. in LA. <laughs> so, so there's a video of it. No. So um, basically, uh, even within Latin, you can make hybrid letter forms. And the ones I've made in, in tragic, not Roman, that's the name of the font. In tragic, not Roman, uh, are hybrids. In terms of non-Latin hybrids, all-time favorite? Oh, there's just too many nice ones. I mean, I'll try to, um, let me think here. No, I don't want to take up your time, but, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll share it on Twitter, for sure. I'll share, okay. I'll share with examples, <laughs> follow up. Yeah. Can you read what Mary Catherine is saying? Let me see. She says, uh, you can just tweet some pictures to me later. Okay. I'll tweet okay. it to the world. <laughs> so you don't have a favorite. You, you, that one's hard to. It's like having a favorite kid, child. That's not going to. And you have a lot of them. So. <laughs> too <Okay>. many. <laughs> All right. So Neil asks. And by the way, guys, so both Neil Patel and Mark Jamra are on the call, and they did uh, a session late last year, uh, yeah. and they also do non-Latin script. Neil is asking, in the non-Latin design world, we are al always worried about Latinizing other cultures' forms. Looking at the juice box, it makes me wonder if in cultures where there are few experimental display faces, if there is similar thing taking place in reverse in an attempt to achieve certain latin display face aesthetic bad things are done to the letter forms without understanding a good way to translate the aesthetic into the non-latin script right but when he says the other way around oh, does he mean influencing latin or neil can you clarify and then um i know that you said you're, that your screen is really large but if you scroll down you can read the uh, and then you'll but still I see our see video. Yeah. I should look at the questions more than my own face anyway. So. <laughs> so Neil says that reverse may have been a bad choice of words. So, okay. Uh, well, there are many more Latin fonts than any, for any other script. And convenience is, is king. So a lot of people will open up a Latin font and try to make a non-Latin of it. That's, that's typically what happens. Right. And... Um, they don't want, they're trying to save time to begin with. They're not going to spend too much time making it awesome. They're going to just do something that gets to a point, does the job, they think. Uh, and because there are so many more Latin fonts, it's uh, a lot easier. And it feels natural to derive a non Latin from the hundred of thousand, 200,000 Latin fonts that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, they're also very easy to acquire now. In the past, when you couldn't copy paste, fonts weren't digital, the work was about the same. So it was less tempting to Latinize because it wasn't less work. And now it's a lot less work to Latinize. Uh, but some of it is convenient, some of it is inferiority complex, some of it is uh, they want to look Western. This happens a lot in many cultures. Even though if you ask them to their face, they're going to say, oh, we're very proud of our culture, but not in every aspect and not everybody. So um, some people like, for example, there's a lot of Latinization in Thailand. And um, I've been to Thailand twice and it's a very interesting, very cool place. Uh, and um, sometimes so some uh, people who make Thai fonts go too far. Thai people go too far. And uh, John Hudson pointed this out to me a few years ago and it, didn't haven't realized it, but it's very true. Most non-Latinization is done by non by them by natives, not by 
Westerners. Uh, Westerners who adopt a non-Latin script tend to love it more than their own script uh, and um, will take care of it, especially these days. Especially these days when uh, people are being educated, like at Reading University, um, just there is a risk of becoming too conservative, too, too trying to preserve too much. But um, it's better than the other way around. So yeah, good, good question. I hope that answers your question, Neil. Um, I think that more than often people are much more aware of the power of visuals, type graphics, more so now than before. Um, yeah. Okay, so a question from Bernardo. How or where do we draw the line be between localization and inspiration? Latin type design finds inspiration in many other scripts, either, either other Latin scripts or non-Latin scripts. Should this also be valid for non-Latin script designs? Sure. I mean, um, anything goes as long as um, you're mindful, as long as you have good intentions and you pay attention. Um, so scripts should influence each other. And it doesn't really matter if I believe that they will influence each other. So it's a matter of um, where to get inspiration anywhere, anywhere that makes sense. Not necessarily anywhere that feels good, but anywhere uh, that makes sense. So you can get inspiration just like that um, Cyrillic poster in the, hotel, in the hotel elevator with the Arabic looking thing. You know, they got inspiration from Arabic and uh, to evoke something that, that it made sense for them to evoke. Consequences of that, more open-ended. But um, it's, to me, it's better than not trying. To me, it's better than using you know, Helvetica for everything or the system Arabic font or whatever, that Cyrillic font. Those tend to be too conservative. And um, that will turn off uh, young people and which will, it will stunt cultural progress. I mean, the, the, if you really want to kill a writing system, you treat it like a museum piece. That's my philosophy. So. Okay. Great. Thank you, Bernardo. I hope that helped. <clears throat> Jeff asks, if needing to typeset a text in multiple scripts, is there a type family that you'd recommend? That's actually a good question. Good question. It's also a, a very deep technical question. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on the script. Um, we're lucky that the operating systems these days come with decent, mostly decent writing system support. Um, in the past, you had to splice things together. And also in the past, uh, people were not trying to harmonize scripts very much. There was a lot of Latinization going on, but uh, there wasn't a lot of like uh, umbrella thinking about what this whole thing should be. Um, but um, for example, if you're typesetting uh, something in Latin and Armenian, uh, I can help you. If uh, if you're typesetting something in other scripts, uh, if you if you can anybody who can list the name the script we can figure out collectively or myself I will help you know figure out what fonts to use um, asking on fora is good type drawers type uh, type of file um, there's noise but there's also a lot of helpful people who uh, know very knowledgeable and um, it's good to ask in public I mean um, most of the things I've learned are by being wrong in public uh, that's the best teacher. Being wrong in public is the best teacher. So uh, <laughs> sounding dumb in public, because mm -hmm. people rarely use their voices to, they use their voices more to criticize, to show off what they know. So, and that you can leverage that. So uh, you're wrong in public, somebody will correct you and you learn. Uh, if you write in public or you probably won't hear anything back. So. <laughs> Uh, Jeff added uh, another question. Is there any widespread ones to avoid? Uh, a lot of, you know what, to, to generally to avoid? Uh, a Didon, like a Bodoni or um, Bodoni or a Dido style. Mm -hmm. They're so Latin. Those styles are so like archetypically uh, classical French Latin that Anybody who tries to make a non-Latin of that is almost always too tempted 
to be too literal and ends up with uh, something very awkward, even though formally it looks beautiful. And the Didon category looks beautiful. That's like a, a graceful old French building. But um, you put that building in, uh, in Bangkok and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. And, um, except if it's the French embassy, but you know. <laughs> so um, avoid the style-wise, not particular fonts, but there are styles that lend themselves more to, to uh, non-Latinization, shall we say, are easier to harmonize, and harmonize. There could actually be fonts that look a little bit awkward as a Latin font that might be very conducive to, uh, mm -hmm. and the best fonts, uh, the best typefaces are designed at the same time so um if you're you have to plan and you can't support all the systems that's the thing if you make a font that's good at latin and arabic and two years later you decide to, to add tie to it you regret not you regret you can't help it the original design is probably not good enough so it becomes a question of how much do you give up and deviate fully how do you balance it it's a very, it's probably the single biggest question in type design, uh, how to uh, harmonize writing systems, especially after the fact. So good question. Okay. Good question. I, I'd love to hear from you guys, how many people here are type designers? Just let us know with a yes or no, or just a yes in the chat bar. Um, meanwhile, I wanted to ask you, Rhett, like to that, to Jeff's question, you were talking about um, romanizing or making something didon, you know, based on a, a, a script. The Burmese slide, for example, that they made into black letter, that's, that's a good example of really destroying yeah, the look. Especially since black letter is barely used. I mean, it's more used <laughs> now than ever, but it's, it's a historical Latin style that evokes something very specific. It evokes either uh, old Germany or uh, uh, LA gangs, or I don't know what you want, it's certain things. <laughs> and I don't think uh -huh. that poster was about Germany or LA gangs. Or LA so, gangs, probably. So um, it's probably just awkward. I mean, it's <laughs> nice to look at, but then when, it, when you let it do something to you, it's not doing the right thing. Because right, well, that, that was... That was kind of a cluster mess because maybe it was, okay, so, maybe it was a beer label. I don't know. Then maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe it makes sense. Well, I would love to see if anyone here in the room speaks Burmese or reads Burmese and then you can let us know. So take a look at the chat bar. There's a lot of people who, who design type faces. How many of you uh, design in other languages or at least support other languages? Well, let's see. I know that, that Mark and Neil do. <laughs> at least <laughs> and then we'll finish up here so yeah if you guys if you support or design in other languages so bernardo uh yes but that's the same script because that is latin correct but here's right. the oh this is a good thing to to uh, take a tangent on yes uh, spanish uses latin but it doesn't use it the same way so mm -hmm. um uh, every language has a cultural background baggage whatever you want to call it that it's not worth it, it's worth paying attention to. Uh, for example, um, I don't have it handy, but if you look at the uh, CNN, Spanish CNN logo, mm -hmm. it says CNN, there's a tilde on the top, it says CNN, -ye. so okay. it's like, which is wonderful. And uh, that tilde is a shape that's very Spanish. It's wavy. So. If just like the diamond dot on the bonjus on the Latin bonjus logo, uh, that waviness, some subtly on some level evokes uh, Spanishness, um, and you can use that. Um, Polish has oh Vietnamese has mm. two or three accents on vowels, um, and that gives a flavor to text. And you can use that flavor to make even the base forms, the, the base Latin forms without the accents can be designed to evoke that too. So um, even locally, I mean, so different parts of America have different visual motifs and you can incorporate right. those in other forms too. Right, right. So we have some people who developed languages, let's see, Victoria had languages, but not scripts. 
And then Jason is working on Greek Cyrillic Cherokee. I've drawn really. Hmm. That's good. Interesting. Cherokee very is very cool. interesting. Cherokee. Um, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, we're at, we're actually over. But that's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, not just fonts. Writing systems mm -hmm. are invented, and they can be invented with a Latin skew or not. If you look at uh, Cherokee, it was invented to uh, typeset the Cherokee language, which they didn't have written form before. When before that happened, I, I'm not sure, like the 18th century, the 19th, but um, and the forms look very Latin, and that makes it easier to think about for a Latin user. That makes it easier to manufacture, but I have to wonder. Did, would consciously deviating from Latin would have helped Cherokee people feel more Cherokee. Mm -hmm. um, so when you invent a writing system, and this isn't as rare as you think, when you invent a writing system, also be mindful of what you're doing in terms of um, the shapes. What are they saying? Are, are, are the shapes saying that this is a second rate Latin? Are the shapes saying that, oh, this is from Africa or whatever. So they, the shapes the, the shapes do this. Right, Secretly. when you're talking about the Cherokee writing system, I was about to call on Mark, but it looks like Mark also put the date in. Uh, 19th, okay, second guess was correct. 18th, yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mark. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you enjoyed the talk uh, from Prant. I certainly do. I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so I see all this stuff all over the place, and I'm just so happy that he was able to uh, share this with us. So, um, and Neil has a little comment for you as well. I don't know if you see that. Her, I do. But... <laughs> okay, <wow>. good. <laughs> good. Exactly. Well, have a good day, guys. Uh, we have a lot more speakers coming up. We are scheduled into September now. It's getting crazy. But um, yes, I, I I enjoyed it. Thank you, Hrant, as much. Uh, Kate, Mary Kate also said this is great, and I agree. Thank you. Um, have a good day, guys. And uh, Hrant, thank you so much. Thanks, Rachel. Take care. Okay. Bye, everybody. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Yeah.